pay Stephen Flynn. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, I said last week that history would judge us based on our response, not just to the abhorrent terrorist attack in Israel, but in our response to the humanitarian crisis which was undoubtedly unfolding in Gaza itself. On our collective unequivocal condemnation of the abhorrent attacks of the 7th of October, this House has been and continues to be fully united. Just as we are united in our condemnation of any form of anti-Semitism which rears its head on these aisles and indeed in our thoughts and prayers for all of those hostages who need to be returned safely to their families. However, in respect of the humanitarian crisis in Gaza, and whilst I do welcome the announcements from the Prime Minister today, I believe that we can and must go further. And here's why. Because turning off electricity and water to Gaza is collective punishment. Limiting the free access of food and medicines to Gaza is collective punishment. Preventing people from fleeing, including British citizens from Gaza, is collective punishment. Dropping leaflets in northern Gaza, telling people to flee or they will be deemed partners of Hamas, is a precursor for further collective punishment. All of us, all of us in this chamber know that collective punishment is prohibited by international law. So I ask the Prime Minister to use his office to do some good on the humanitarian side of this conflict in Gaza. And to answer the question which I asked last week, will he now, given the severity of this appalling situation, agree that a ceasefire is required in the region? Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I, we just, I would characterise the situation differently to the Honourable Gentleman with the greatest of respect. Israel has suffered an appalling act of terror. It has the right to defend itself and ensure that something like this does not happen again. He talks about people moving from the north to the south of Gaza. Uh, it is absolutely right that Israel takes every precaution to avoid harming civilians and indeed their president and my conversations confirm that they intend to act within international humanitarian law. Uh, but what is happening is Hamas is preventing people from moving and keeping them in harm's way. And again, he didn't mention that in his statement, but he would do well to recognise that that's Hamas's policy. Hamas embedding itself in civilian populations, using them as human shields, and then preventing them from leaving when they've been given advance notice. Uh, where I do agree and have been very clear is that we must do everything we can to support humanitarian efforts uh, into Gaza, uh, which I'll refer him to my previous comments. Uh, particularly, I raised all these issues with the Israeli <coughs> Prime Minister, and we will continue to do everything we can. And I would again just point out it's not just a function of money. It is about the logistics of getting what are uh, very considerable amounts of aid into the region, and here the UK has capability and expertise that we are very, very willing to bring to bear and having active discussions about how best to do so. Vicky Ford.